Section 24 of Reclaiming Revolution History, Summation, and Lessons from the Work of Storm Standing Together to Organize a Revolutionary Movement This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by the Progressing America Project Reclaiming Revolution, Section 24 Revolutionary Discipline Experiences Storm had some good practices, like semi-annual criticism and self-criticism sessions, clear codes of conduct, and security protocols that facilitated collective discipline and helped create a healthier group culture. Storm's codes of conduct and security protocols were an important attempt to challenge many common problems in the movement, like shit-talking, liberalism, and oppressive behavior. They helped Storm members understand what it means to be a disciplined revolutionary. The codes and protocols gave us shared principles to which we could hold one another accountable. But members didn't always uphold the codes of conduct and security protocols. And we did not have sufficient mechanisms for holding members accountable for unprincipled behavior. Neither did we have an intentional plan to help members develop revolutionary discipline over time. Outside of their political work, many STORM members had poor individual practice at times. Though not committed within STORM itself, these errors negatively impacted the organization's development. But STORM had no way to intervene in members' unprincipled revolutionary conduct in their personal lives. At times, members did not openly communicate their frustrations with each other, letting them fester and hurt the group. These errors impacted the organization even more seriously when committed by STORM leaders, who had an outsized impact on the organization. Additionally, Storm's conception of how to encourage principled behavior and discouraged unprincipled behavior was too limited. We did not have formal mechanisms or an organizational culture that promoted emotional health and healing. We saw these areas as people's personal issues. But there were many times when members' emotional challenges manifested as bad political practice and caused crises in the group's political work. Beyond their emotional health, Storm did not intentionally address the relationship between members' personal life situations, for example, financial well-being, job status, and family situation, and their participation and development within the group. Storm was ultimately unable to manage or resolve these internal contradictions. Lessons. Having clear codes of conduct helps an organization to build an intentional group culture. One challenge in this is holding members and leaders equally accountable. Recognizing that popular bourgeoisie American culture is individualistic and anti-collective, revolutionaries need to engage in intentional processes to learn how to uphold shared codes of conduct. We cannot expect to transform into completely principled revolutionaries overnight. Dealing with personal conduct is political, it is organizational business. We need to articulate explicit guidelines and expectations for correct practice for revolutionaries in the mass movement. This should be an area of regular dialogue and feedback. In a group with different personalities and experiences, open and honest communication is critical. It is important to have mechanisms that provide revolutionaries with the space to deal with criticisms in a productive, proactive way. While we must protect people from attacks, we must not shield them from criticism. This is especially important as it relates to leaders, both formal and informal. Revolutionary organizations must create structured spaces to help their members work through emotional challenges and to address the political contradictions in its members' personal lives. Organizations should strive to do this without being overly invasive. Revolutionaries need to be self-reflective and dialogue openly about the political impact of their personal lives. Whether it's the residue of past trauma or one's current life situation, this is part of who we are as political actors. Outstanding questions. How does a cadre organization strike a balance between political work and healing work? Between discipline and support? How do we do the amount of work that it will require to build a cadre organization and the mass movement in this country and still put enough time into our lives and families? How do we build camaraderie and collective support systems? How do we cultivate interpersonal solidarity? What is the appropriate role of a cadre organization in holding people accountable for their individual behavior? In helping them work through their personal challenges, for example, burnout, emotional issues, 
or their own oppressive behavior or abuse of privilege. End of section 24